Hello and welcome to Avia Learn. In the coming tutorials we will introduce to you the technical training of Airbus A320 family. The first chapter will be about avionics systems. In this video we will talk about the ATA31 indicating system chapter. So let's start. Indicating and recording system. Electronic instrument system. The single aisle aircraft cockpit instrumentation information is displayed on six display units. These display units are part of the electronic instrument system EIS. The EIS is separated into two subsystems, Electronic Flight Instrument System, EFIS, Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitoring, ECOM. The four EFIS displays give to the flight crew all the basic flight parameters. The ECOM system gives to the flight crew aircraft system displays, faults, checklists, and the aircraft operational status. Electronic Instrument System ECOM The system data acquisition concentrators stacks receive data from the aircraft systems and sends it to the display management computers DMCs for display on the ECOM display units. Note DMC-1 supplies both ECOM displays and DMC-2 is also a backup for ECOM displays. The DMCs acquire data and transmit it to the display units, DUs which generate the images. Under normal circumstances, DMC-1 supplies both ECOM display. DMC-2 and 3 are available as a backup. The flight warning computers FWCs, heart of the ECOM system, receive data from Aircraft systems to generate red warnings. The stacks to generate amber cautions. The FWCs then supply. The DMCs for the display of alert messages. The attention getters. The loudspeakers with oral alerts and synthetic voice messages. ECOM control and indicating. The engine warning display, EWD is divided into two main parts. The upper area is used to display the main engine parameters, the fuel on board, FOB, and the slat flap position. The lower area is used for warning, caution, and memo messages. The system display, SD, is divided into two areas. The upper part is used to display the various system pages, diagrams of the aircraft systems. The lower part is used to display permanent data. Below the ECOM displays on the center pedestal, there is the ECOM control panel. The two control knobs on the left-hand side are used to adjust the brightness of the two ECOM screens and to turn them off. The push buttons on the right-hand side are mainly used to display any of the system pages or the status page, clear or recall a warning or caution message. An aircraft status page may be also displayed on the SD to give an operational status of the aircraft. When things are not normal the status page displays operational data on the left-hand side, an operative system on the right-hand side. In front of each pilot, there are two attention getters, a red master warning and an amber master caution. As a further means of getting the attention, there is a loudspeaker on each side of the cockpit for oral alerts and synthetic voice messages. EFIS For the EFIS displays data from the Air Data and Inertial Reference System, ADIRS, plus navigation data from the Flight Management and Guidance System, FMGS, is fed directly to the DMCs. The DMCs then process the data and generate the images to display. Under normal circumstances, DMC-1 supplies the captain EFIS displays. DMC-2 supplies the first officer EFIS displays. DMC-3 is available as a backup. EFIS control and indicating. Flight parameters are displayed on the primary flight display, PFD while navigation data is displayed on the navigation display, ND. Outboard of the PFDs, there are control knobs to adjust the brightness of the associated PFD and ND, and to turn the displays off. Two EFIS control panels are used to select what is displayed on the EFIS screens. 
The FE's control panels are divided into two sections, one section associated with the PFD and the other one with the ND. Just below the ECOM screens, on the center pedestal, there is a switching panel with, on the right, two rotary selectors to restore data to the FE's and ECOM displays an abnormal operation. Clock. A single electrical clock gives the universal time coordinated, UTC, and date as time references for the crew and all peripheral systems. The other functions available for crew are elapsed time, AT, and chronometer, CHR. The clock can be synchronized with satellite GPS time. The time is also displayed at the bottom of the SD. Centralized Fault Display System, CFDS The Centralized Fault Display Interface Unit, CFDAU, centralizes and memorizes all information concerning aircraft system failures. Reading or printing of the failure information is done in the cockpit with any multipurpose control and display unit, MCDU, or the printer. Most aircraft system computers have a built-in test equipment, BITE. The byte permanently monitors the system operation. When a failure is detected, it is stored in the byte memory and is transmitted to the CFDAU. The ECOM, which generate warning and status messages, delivers these data to the CFDIU as well. The failure information is available in various reports. The reading of the failure information is made from two different MCDU menus depending on if the aircraft is in flight or on ground. The system report test function is available on ground only. It enables a dialogue between the CFDIU and a system computer. The system report test menu page presents the list of all the systems connected to the CFDIU in ATA chapter order. The maintenance post-flight report, PFR, can only be printed on ground. It summarizes and displays the list of the ECOM warning messages and the fault messages that occurred during the last flight, with the associated time, flight phase, and ATA reference. It helps the maintenance crew to make a correlation for easier troubleshooting. In this lesson we talked about the indicating system chapter, and we covered the Electronic Instrument System, EIS, ECOM and EFIS and their related controls and indicatings. The Clock. The Centralized Fault Display System, CFDS. That's all for our tutorial. See you later.